Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I promised you another video on the Gain. Uh, we really didn't get to it uh, very well when we did the video. But anyway, there is the uh, bracket. And there's the bracket that's uh, basically holding the guy wires. Let's kind of zoom in a little bit for you so you can see it. And uh, of course there's what they call a thimble there, a little metal ring, which I'll show you a close-up on here on the ground in a minute, that's uh, holding the guy wires. So with that, let's kind of zoom into the uh, follow the guy lines down to where they're anchored here on the ground. And uh, let me kind of show you some pieces of this anchor and turnbuckle. So there's the little eye of the anchor. You can barely see it down there in the grass. But that's uh, about a four foot rod, steel rod, that we screwed into the ground at about a 45 degree angle <clears throat> to kind of match the angle of the uh, guy lines themselves and I had a fellow when I bought these they were not welded the eyes were not welded and I took them to a welder and he welded the eye of the anchor rod uh, closed just for safety uh, purposes of course then I bought some uh, regular uh, heavy-duty galvanized turnbuckle, which you see there, which of course is used to tighten up the uh, guy wires. And you remember me talking about that little thimble? Well, here's a shot of that thimble right here. And it's uh, in the other video, you can see Gary winding or placing the guy wire around the thimble. Uh, and it basically protects the wires, you know, gives them a good turn radius and uh, for attachment to the turnbuckle right there. The, we the red wire you see is just uh, a kind of a safety device. It's very possible that uh, in high winds or in an unusual situation, the turnbuckle could begin unturning all by itself and loosen up the guy wire so we placed a, a piece of wire uh, through the turnbuckle and through the uh, little thimble and kind of tie it off uh, on both ends and that kind of keeps the uh, guy the uh, turnbuckle from accidentally uh, loosening up uh, and then you'd come out and find one of your guy lines is hanging loose rather than uh, taunt on the uh, uh, tower, holding the tower. So those wires wrapped on there are just a, a little safety feature to keep it from, uh, keep the turnbuckle from uh, loosening up. The other uh, thing to make note of is there's two clamps on here, and uh, I, I was taught a uh, good saying, <laughs> or a little saying, uh, to remember, and that saying is, never saddle a dead horse. Never saddle a dead horse. And basically what that means is, you want the saddle to be on the part of the guy wire that is not the end of the wire which is right here you can see the uh, u-bolt or it's not really a u-bolt but a, the u is compressing this dead end of the wire that stops right here and it'll weaken it at this point, but it won't weaken the main part of the guy wire, which is actually uh, the support part. And so that's where the saying comes from. This is the saddle. So you don't want to saddle 
a dead horse okay so you don't want this end you don't want these uh, clamps turned this way where the saddle is actually on the uh, uh, the end uh, the dead end of the uh, guy so notice but we have two one here and one here and then we've taped off we taped off and we even put a little tie on there uh, the end of the guy wire with some electrical tape so that you know it won't come unraveled and you know it's less likely to stick you if you were to bump into it or something and keeps it from unraveling then we tied it right here with just a little tie to keep it there so uh, Gary and Robert uh, did this they did a really good job uh, let me pause and I'll show you uh, the other one over at the corner and the here we are at the corner of the fence again in similar situation uh, again uh, don't saddle a dead horse so <laughs> you want your saddle on the side where the guy wire is and not on the end side and that's the way we did it and again it's got couple of little safety wires in it and a four foot anchor down there in the ground about four feet long that all this is attached to. I'm going to kind of turn upwards now and kind of give you an idea. Remember I mentioned that we were uh, a little bit afraid that the sky wire would not clear the house but as you can see it cleared the house by a pretty good margin uh, we probably got several feet in there between the gutter and the guy wire and I'll give you another shot up at the bracket that's holding it and again there's thimbles up there where the guy wire is wrapped around and very similar uh, situation with two clamps holding it just as they were down here on the ground all right so we're back in the shack and the other thing I wanted to show you uh, in this video was the uh, controller box for the rotor remember we had some problems with the original box and I had to go out and get another box and I found this one look almost pristine uh, can't say if it was used it wasn't used very much and uh, so I went out and got another controller box and here it is and of course uh, how these work you have to use a little discretion when you use these uh, again this is your directions on the meter where the beam is pointed and the first thing you do is release the brake and then you press either clockwise or counterclockwise the two little buttons on the sides and the beam will start turning and the meter will indicate the direction that the beam is pointed and you let go give it a few seconds to settle down and then you release the brake. You don't want to release the brake immediately. Uh, it slams a little metal wedge into some uh, gears in the housing and it can break the metal wedge if you've got a beam that has a lot of torque on it. So you want to let the beam settle down for say three seconds or four seconds and then release the brake and that way you kind of protect your rotor from any damage now they do make a neat board that uh, basically puts a delay on the brake it's about 29 30 dollars and you can wire it into this box and uh, when you release that brake it actually waits uh, three or four seconds before it actually does release the brake so it kind of protects the uh, rotor from damage in case you should make a mistake and immediately release the brake. It 
it puts a delay in there automatically. The other thing I wanted to show you, I'll move the box in a minute and I'll show you the little, uh, what I call a pigtail and a Jones plug that I wired up on the back of this box uh, so that I could disconnect it during a lightning storm and give me a little protection here in the shack. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> turn the video off and turn the box around and then we'll be so right we back. back again. And uh, I wired up a little uh, Jones plug, which is what this is. And uh, I'm gonna put a little decal on there so I know which way to connect them back together. It's not real obvious just by looking at it, especially uh, when it's sitting behind the uh, controller and it's kind of dark back there. So by looking at these two decals, I can tell which way the plugs go together. But had to wire this all up and uh, you can see there's eight connections on the back of this rotor box. And of course they all have to be wired up in a certain order that matches whatever's on top of the rotor uh, <clears throat> up at the top of the tower. So in other words, this green, I'm sorry, this yellow wire in position number four, one, two, three, four. Uh, if you looked at the bottom of the rotor, it would be in this very same position on the rotor. So this yellow, yellow wire goes literally from here through this Jones plug, out the other side, up the tower, and is plugged into terminal number four on the rotor itself at the top of the tower. So that's how you wire up a rotor. All these uh, different colors have to match up with one of the eight positions. And it uh, really doesn't matter. A lot of guys uh, follow uh, the manufacturer's recommendation on the wiring. In other words, you know, white, black, blue, red, or whatever it is. The only ones that really matter are the first two because that's your 30 volts. And the wires for that are a little bit thicker than the other wires. So you probably should always put the heavy duty wires on, on positions one and two. The rest of them really don't matter as long as they match up to the way it is up on top of the tower. So if this yellow wire was down here at position eight, then we'd have to make sure that the yellow wire was also on position eight up in the tower. So, uh, rest of them really don't matter as long as they're identical here and identical up on the tower. And with that said, let me uh, kind of show you how this uh, thing unplugs. And I'm going to turn the video off, unplug it, and then I'll give you another shot. Okay, so we're back again. So here's that Jones plug that I was talking about. You can see it's got eight pins on it. And they match up with these eight and I can very easily unplug this when it's uh, behind there or if the weather's bad and I disconnect the box from the rotor in case I get a nearby lightning strike you know it won't induce any voltage in, uh, into this wire and then it will go into this box and possibly burn up something. Now whether or not it would help with a direct strike if it did come down the rotor cable you know, it would probably come inside the shack. <clears throat> direct strikes could go anywhere, but more than likely the direct strike will go down one of the legs of the tower and into the ground in the halo system under the tower. So probably it would just be a higher voltage induced in this cable and, you know, nothing more than that. and by unplugging it I'd probably save this box uh, from electrical damage during a uh, nearby strike uh, lightning strike during bad weather so this is called a Jones plug and you can buy them on the internet and it's a little tricky to wire up kind of finicky uh, connections are real close together but uh, even uh, telescope man with his 
not very skilled soldering skills <laughs> was able to do this so I'm sure you'd be able to do it too anyway with that said I wish y'all clear skies as I always do and there's the flex running I'm listening to the good old boys net right now on 7.279 and with that said, I wish you clear skies and 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.